Greetings and welcome back to room 303. In our talks with Walt, as we are calling our readings through the deathbed edition of Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass, we turn now to a poem, one of the more controversial poems of Leaves of Grass, certainly for its day, one that was a handful of poems that several publishers said had to be banished from Leaves of Grass or they wouldn't publish it. It's called To a Common Prostitute. This is poem number 18 of the 38 of Autumn Rivulets. We pointed out in earlier lectures, Autumn relating to the old, rivulets relating to the new. And in the new here, we're going to follow in a strand of thought that many have pointed out, not just me, how there's a certain kind of Christ-like or Messiah-like voice that will be utilized. And, and, and obviously, we're going, to, uh, we're going to ask about this one. Emerson told Whitman, this is a poem you better drop out of Leaves of Grass. It's just too controversial. We cannot be talking about prostitutes in poetry that is going to be for everyone. And, and, and Whitman just, he just out, outright disagreed for reasons that I think we'll get to, obviously, in this poem. Although, to be fair, this is not new territory for us at all, as we'll comment in a moment. Now, our assumptions are that you've been following our stuff at LearnStrong.net down that left-hand side, Talks with Walt, our playlist, and that you've been with us from the very first word, come, and we'll talk about that word in this poem, right, all the way up to and including a set of introductory comments for Autumn Rivulets, and of course we just finished with, uh, with laws. As we turn to our Nortons to give us a little bit of background information, we're told that this poem was one of the messenger leaves of the 1860 Leaves of Grass, and unchanged in all succeeding editions. This poem has acquired a certain notoriety in having, in an earlier period, been frequently cited for censorship. Um, in his manuscript, Whitman originally had written, My love for my girl, in the fourth line, and kiss on your lips for significant look, in the sixth. The poet, Whit Norton's will finish, may have thought of this poem as a variation upon the biblical account of the woman taken in adultery in John 8, verses 8 through 11, where, of course, he will famously have said, let him who is without sin cast the first stone. Now, let's point out, again, as we have, and, and, and obviously the Luke 7.37 passage, where a woman comes in, it seems to be that she probably is somebody like a prostitute who will wash Jesus' feet with her tears and her hair. And then a little bit later, Mary Magdalene is mentioned, and of course there's a whole school of thought that I'll let you run to ground on your own study about maybe this woman was Mary Magdalene, even though in the text itself there's no direct correlation. Of course, we've heard about prostitution. Do you guys remember this? In um, Song of Myself 15, do you remember this line that we've already commented on? The prostitute draggles her shawl, her bonnet bobs on her tipsy and pimpled neck. The crowd laugh at her black guard oats. The men jeer and weak to each other. And then in parenthetics, Whitman, miserable. I do not laugh at your oats nor jeer you. Uh, and of course, you'll remember that the city dead house just a few poems ago in Autumn Rivulets played a similar game by pointing out the humanity of a prostitute. I want to comment uh, right away that notice the word prostitute doesn't actually end up in this poem. It's just used here in the title. And notice it is to a common prostitute, which I find a fascinating use of words. Again, some of you will say, oh, come on, McGee, you're going far too deep into these poems. But I think Whitman, as I've said to you, I think Whitman is having a lot of fun, but he's having a lot of intellectual fun as well. Notice the word common. Go back to Song of Myself 14. Do you remember when he said it? What is commonest is me? I think that this use of the word common has multiple variants and uses here. Obviously, common prostitute can also mean a prostitute that is well used, ill used, uh, if, you, if you get my drift. Notice right away the voice, the oracular voice in this poem. Be composed, be at ease with me. I am Walt Whitman, liberal and lusty as nature. Not till the sun excludes you, do I exclude you? Not till the waters refuse to glisten for you and the leaves to wrestle for you, do my words refuse to glisten and wrestle for you. My girl, I appoint with you an appointment and I charge you that you make preparation to be worthy to meet me. And I charge you that you be patient and perfect till I come. Till then I salute you with a significant look that you do not forget me. Now I just 
I, I find a, a collection of poems like Autumn Rivulets. It's, it's hidden away. I mean, I have lots and lots of uh, pals who have read Leaves of Grass, only parts of it, and they will say, you know, these poems out of Autumn Rivulets, many of these I never even paid attention to, and this is one of those that now all of a sudden I'm ready to sit up and pay particular attention to, especially after reading um, as, as we've already said, not, uh, not just City Deadhouse, but also To Him That Was Crucified. I mean, to go back and look at To Him That Was Crucified just a few poems ago, and then to come back to this, you all of a sudden start to get this feel that Whitman is trying to channel that messianic or that Christ-like voice as he speaks directly to the prostitute. And it's almost as if we are voyeurs looking in and paying attention to what he has to say. And of course, in the process of doing this, we're back to the John 8 passage, right? Notice we'll begin with notice the idea of composition. Be composed. As opposed to what? Not, not being composed? Uh, and then the dash, to remind us of our Emily Dickinson. Be at ease with me. In other words, I'm not going to put you in any way at disease. Okay, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna make you feel like I'm somehow judging you. The inclusivity here is amazing. And then notice the I am construction that we've seen so many times in Leaves of Grass, but notice here it's I am Walt Whitman, by the way, only used one time as a phrase itself in all of Leaves of Grass. But it does take us back to Song of Myself 24, where Walt Whitman is uh, going to mention himself. And it takes us to Salute Among four times he does this. We've already commented on that. And the fact that when, in 1855, he publishes Leaves of Grass for the first time, he doesn't put his name there. That's why that opening set of lines is so important for us, because he finally signs his name there. Notice he'll say that he's liberal. Only time it's used in all Leaves of Grass is right here. And... Lusty. Seven times already that word's given, been used in Lisa Grass. This will make it say as, and then notice nature capitalized, which I think is one of his gestures towards Emerson. The fact that it is capitalized. We've obviously already given comments at LearnStrong.net on Emerson's famous essay lecture. And then two knots. Not till the sun excludes you do I exclude you. By the way, the word sun, as we learned from our study of Hamlet in those opening lines, when Claudius will ask Hamlet for the first time, how is it that the clouds still hang on you? No, I'm too much in the sun. That works on stage because there's two spellings of the word sun, S-U-N and S-O-N. And of course, if you're hearing these words read out loud, not till the sun, it can be S-O-N, right? And of course, the minute we're talking S-O-N, we're talking about the very Christ to him that was crucified of the earlier passage. Not till the sun excludes you, do I exclude you? In other words, this is that inclusivity we've been talking about of Whitman's. Not till the waters refuse to glisten for you, and the leaves, of course, with a title like Leaves of Grass, we sit up. To rustle for you, do my words refuse to glisten and rustle for you? It's interesting that it's my words. In other words, we're back to the theodicy project that we've commented on so many times. We're back to what Whitman sees as the power of his words. In other words, I'm not going to refuse you if the waters don't refuse you and the leaves don't refuse you. Of course, the waters, many have read as being somehow a reference to baptism and the Christian sacrament, right? And then the break, and then it's my girl. And again, as we heard from our Nortons, there was a different version of this. But notice, my girl only used one time in all these of grass. It's right here. I appoint with you an appointment. Now, the language here, read at the literal level, is deeply disturbing for a witness audience. There's no question. In other words, he's propositioning a prostitute. But when you read this from the perspective of this messianic, Christ-like voice, all of a sudden it becomes a fascinating study in language. I appoint with you an appointment, and I charge you. By the way, you'll remember that myself and mine, that phrasing, I charge you, gets used twice. I charge you that you make preparation to be worthy to me. Me. This idea of being worthy takes us, of course, back to our Song of the Open Road study, where he comments on who is allowed and not allowed to travel with him in the open road. And it's always about proper health. In other words, there seems to be a suggestion here that Whitman is saying, I am ready to enjoy myself with you, but I want you to be ready to enjoy me, this idea of preparation. And we're back to the phrasing, I charge you that you be patient and perfect till I come. Now, of course, the sexual language can be played here, and there's no, there's no reason uh, to not include that in our reading, but notice again the use of the word come as the very first word. I told you guys when we played this game from the very first opening lectures that Leaves of Grass is about an invitation. This is why we call it Talks with Walt. In other words, I think Whitman is inviting all of us to have discourse, to have conversation. And in an age, very much like Whitman's, when battle lines get drawn and there's either my side or, your, or, or, or there's the wrong side kind of thing, this idea that 
Let's have an exchange of ideas. Let's enjoy uh, being patient and perfect. Now, the very fact that he would use the word perfect here is going to be controversial for Whitman's audience, no doubt. And then there's the word till then, the phrase till then. Till then, I salute you, taking this back to uh, Song of Myself 38. You can run that one to ground. Um, you'll remember in Song of Myself uh, 46, I kiss you with a goodbye kiss and open the gate for your eager sense. Um, it's a similar kind of phrasing. I salute you with a significant look. I told you guys, the whole idea of looking, the whole idea of paying attention. Um, I, I uh, um, see God in, in my own face in the glass, he'll say in Song of Myself 48, and in other faces as well. In other words, he wants us to look at all of the people in the world. He wants his audience of his own day to look at the prostitutes that were in fact in the streets of New York then. And he wants us to see some, he wants us to see a child of God. That's what he wants. Sounding very much like Mandela, as Mandela would speak the same type of language, or Martin Luther King Jr. He says, I will look, salute you with a significant look that you do not forget me. You'll uh, come to this again, this you do not forget me um, phrase in a poem called So Long at the end of Leaves of Grass and Songs of Parting. We're soon to be there. In other words, I'm hopeful, he says, that you will remember the compassion and the love that I show to you and for you. Well, what are we going to do with a poem like this, this radical little offering at 2A? I think the argument that he's making is that all people deserve respect and love and acceptance. Because all people are children of God. That notion that we all have some divine element within us. And for that reason, everyone has to be given accorded respect. At 2B, I love the, what has been often called the messianic voice of a number of poems in Autumn Rivulets. I love how it works here. It is so iconoclastic. And of course, if you're offended by this kind of thing, then obviously Whitman's going to ask you, why are you incapable of seeing all people as being worthy of respect and value, even those that are considered lesser than. This is his reading, of course, of one way he reads the Gospels and especially Christ. We've mentioned the Gospels in 3a, obviously John 8, the Luke 7.37 passage obviously comes to mind. I like to think, though, of the lineage of Emerson and Thoreau and, of course, Emily Dickinson and the inclusivity that all of those writers were constantly challenging us to really think about the term democratic and the term democracy, and what does it mean that we all share in this thing called being human? Of course, Browning's uh, Profira's Lover comes to mind. I've given full lectures on that one at LearnStrong.net. There's so many ways that you can connect this with films, for example, that try to make the whole experience of um, prostitution or uh, sexual trafficking somehow make those victims real, human. And in the process, of course, making us see all of the people of the world as worthy of respect. Finally, a 3B to wrap your brain around a poem like this. It's so simple and yet so complicated, isn't it? Um, is it hard for you uh, it, it, to accept, quote unquote, the other, the different, the one that isn't like you, the one that most everyone puts down and looks down? And why is that so hard? And is our study of Leaves of Grass, hopefully maybe this is going to be answered yes, helping you to see everyone is worthy of respect. Thank you.